Good morning and welcome to the YouTube channel, How to Get an 800 Credit Score. Uh, my name is Lyndon Baptiste and thank you so much for joining us here this morning. Well, it can be morning depending on the part, what part of the world you're living in right now. Uh, but right now, since I'm here in the central part of America, uh, South Dakota, it is morning, 6 a.m. And happy Sunday to all of you credit builders out there. And welcome again uh, to our live stream on how to get an 800 credit score. Uh, this is not our regularly scheduled live stream. Our regular live stream is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, but I want to say a special thank you to all of our 1,094 subscribers that we have currently today. Thank you so much for making um, this channel possible and for helping us to reach out and spread the message um, to all those about building credit and how to get an 800 credit score, how to get excellent credit. And we're all in this journey together in our journey to excellent credit. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. And I wanna thank all of those who participated in the live stream on Wednesday, I really appreciated that uh, very much. It really contributed a lot and it really meant a lot uh, to the live stream too also as well. And I wanted to say, if you're new to this channel, please go ahead and click on the subscribe. Um, the subscribe button is, if you're on a laptop, computer, um, you can just uh, hit it, hit the button. It's on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, or if you're on a cell phone, turn it sideways. It should be in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. It's also underneath the video. Go ahead, click on subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Uh, so that way, uh, you will always um, be able to get my video. Just adjusting my camera there for a second. Every time I make a new video. Um, so, and also, Hit the thumbs up because this uh, channel really, uh, you know, it really helps the channel out and uh, lets YouTube know uh, that we have engagement on our channel. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up, guys. And also share this video everywhere uh, with your friends and your family all over Facebook, Twitter, and all of your social media networks too also as well. So that also helps us uh, spread the message to also um as well um and we ask that everyone please join the facebook group it's called how to get excellent credit and you can follow me on facebook twitter linkedin pinterest and instagram and all the social media networks uh the link can be found at the bottom of the about section of this channel um and also like our facebook page it's named after this channel how to get an 800 credit score too also as well and my name is lyndon baptiste and on this channel we talk about how to build credit how to get excellent credit and um we talk about credit repair also and how to increase your credit score and i also offer free credit coaching and credit repair help and help with increasing your credit score too also as well um so i i you can contact me through facebook or you can email me that link is also in the bottom of the description if you'd like to donate to this channel uh there's a link to donate in the bottom of the about section of this channel too also as well uh, so as you can see uh the title of this uh live stream and our discussion in particular it's going to be about how to build perfect credit from scratch um, and also how to get excellent credit, okay, which is kind of the same topic and the steps that are needed to get excellent credit. So these are the steps that you're going to need if you're thinking about um, building credit or getting a perfect credit score uh, one day. Uh, maybe because you want to get approved for a mortgage, you want to buy your first home or maybe even your second home. But this time you want your mortgage payments to be lowered. Uh, maybe you want to buy your dream car, but this time, you know, you want your payments to be lower. Or it could be just your first car or your first home. Uh, but either way, you're going to need good credit. Um because, you know, with bad credit, of course, uh, you leave yourself open and vulnerable 
to high interest rates, high payments on cars, mortgages, and you name it. Okay. Um, so those are the worst interest rates uh, that you open yourself up to uh, when you have bad credit, anything other than excellent credit or good credit. Okay. Uh, people who have excellent credit um, get the best interest rates, the lower lowest payments available. So also, if you're looking to open up a business and you need uh, business funding, maybe you need a loan or a line of credit to get you started. Um, the best way to do it is to have good credit or excellent credit. Okay. Um, so that is, um, you know, very important and also part of the reason for our journey to excellent credit and spreading this message so that we can help as many people as possible uh, to achieve that goal with us. Um, so we can start off with step one um, to get excellent credit. Uh, step one would be to get a free copy of your credit report. Okay. And I'm just checking uh, to make sure I want to check the live stream here just so I can be sure that I'm, you know, with you guys here. If there's anyone here in the live stream with us, just making sure I get in the live stream comments here with you guys here. Okay. Um, just checking to see who's here with us right now. Okay, um, so let's get right into it here. And uh, so the first step would be to get a free copy of your credit report. And a free copy of your credit report uh, can be obtained um, at annualcreditrepair.com. Okay, and I'm not going to go into full details um, in this video uh, because I have made other videos that go into full detail about these, uh, you know, uh, subjects or so I say, yeah, subjects or sections to this video. Um, so I'm just going to refer to other videos as I go along um, through the different um, subtopics of today's topic. Uh, right now, currently, we have two people uh, with us here in the live stream. And uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you to the two people that, you know, have decided to come on here on a Sunday morning and uh, join us here in the live stream. I really appreciate it. It really uh, helps out the, th the channel. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so I go into full detail about how to get a free copy of your credit report in um, the uh, a video I made. It's, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you guys here. Uh, so that way I can show you how to locate the videos where they are you know if you're a regular if you're a subscriber already you've been watching this channel for a while you probably already know uh but this is also not only for you guys but uh for people who are new to the channel too that are watching uh, so that way they can know how to navigate uh through the channel to find all of the vital information and um that they can um use to learn about how to get excellent credit. So um, that's why I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys here. And um, right now, I'm putting on the screen a uh, YouTube channel. Uh, right now, we have three people with us currently in the live stream. Thank you so much to the three people that have joined. I really appreciate you guys. You really uh, mean a lot uh, to our live stream. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really appreciate you. And uh, let me know if you guys can see the screen clearly or not. Okay, if you can see the screen clearly, uh, just go ahead and type the number one in the comments. All righty. So if you can see the screen clearly, 
uh, just go ahead and type the number one inside of the comments. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so this is the home screen of our channel here, how to get an 800 credit score. And I'm gonna find this video that it you know goes into full detail on how to get a free copy of your credit report. So as you can see, I uh, have uh, the different videos here that we have made concerning the different topics. And uh, we're gonna find the first step in credit repair. Here it is, okay. So, very simple, very easy to find there. Um, you know, these videos can be long, but um, they contain a lot of valuable information. Uh, so, you guys, uh, you know, if you're looking to build credit, you're looking to get excellent credit. Also, uh, you want to definitely uh, watch these videos in their entirety all the way to the end. So, that way you can get the full benefit. Uh, out of the video too also as well okay so in that video i you know take you to the website annualcreditreport.com walk you through uh, how to apply uh, for a free copy of your credit report i believe you can get a free copy once a year uh, you can get some of them online and some of them sent to you in the mail in some cases people were able to get all of them online um, and some in the mail, uh, but it varies uh, for different people uh, depending on whether or not they are able, well, whether or not the uh, credit bureau uh, that you're contacting is able to verify your identity online or not. And basically all, what they do is they ask you a series of questions to verify that you are who you say you are. Um, so sometimes it can be, you know, kind of um, difficult to remember uh, answers to these questions because they may ask you questions about facts uh, that you would have to remember from long ago. I mean, maybe even decades ago. Um, so if you don't remember all the answers, that's OK. Um, you know, you could always uh, request to have uh, your credit report sent to you in the mail. All right. And remember, that is free uh, once a year. You can get a free copy. So um, if I have not <clears throat> recognized your comment <clears throat> yet, uh, it's because I'm on my cell phone trying to uh, access the li live chat. I'm in the live chat, but my cell phone takes uh, a while to um, update. So uh, just bear patience with me. And if you have left a comment, I will you know, acknowledge and respond to your comment uh, as soon as I can. Um, so basically, that is the video. The first step in credit repair um, I made about a month ago, and that's how you get the information on, um, you know, getting a free copy of your credit report. I also threw in some information in there about um, how to protect your identity from identity theft. Uh, tool also and a credit monitoring tool that is very, very useful to you that also protects your identity from identity theft and does the credit monitor monitoring to also and it has a very um, you know very unique uh, credit building tool in there too um, also as well okay and the name of the program is identity IQ uh, Identity IQ is very uh, unique in that it can um, give you your credit report from all three credit bureaus. Okay, that is not free. Uh, the free copies can be obtained from annualcreditreport.com. But if you wanted to afterward um, continue continually monitor uh, your credit and your credit reports uh, from all three credit bureaus, you can do that through Identity IQ. OK. Um, so the next thing you wanted to you want to do uh, after you get a copy of your credit report, um, if you have already started uh, 
establishing credit, that's that's great. Um, if you do not have any open credit lines or credit right now, then what you would need to do as the next step to to get excellent credit, you would have to uh, establish credit. Okay, start building credit. And the way you would start building credit is basically you would uh, open up at least four credit cards. Okay, you can also open up trade lines too also. And um, I go into full detail um, in uh, about these trade lines um, in a video that I have here, which is more recent than the video that I referred you to uh, the last time. And this video can be found right here. So if you can see my screen, uh, just go ahead and type the number one in the comments. If, if your screen is clear and you can hear me clearly, just go ahead and type the number one. Uh, so you can find that video here also, and that's under the videos tab. Okay. And um, that video is entitled Live, as you can see, Live 90K in Primary Trade Lines and AUs. Uh, so that's the title of that video, uh, where basically this video, I go over $90,000 um, in uh, primary trade lines. And the primary trade lines, they're basically credit lines, lines of credit. Uh, these credit lines, they report to the major credit bureaus every month and they some of them offer pretty generous credit limits that they report to the credit bureaus every month and um, the credit limits vary um, from different amounts too also as well some of them uh, can give you what's called a hard inquiry and basically all the hard inquiry is uh, whenever you fill out an application um, that is uh, reported to the credit bureau as a hard inquiry. Uh, so, I, you know, hard inquiries, they account uh, for about 10% of your credit score or your FICO score. Um, and um, the credit bureaus have a set system of, you know, um, docking you for points off of your credit score for each and every. Uh, credit card application uh, that you put in. They have a, a system in place uh, for which they do that um, too also as well. But in this particular video that I'm showing you here, live 90K and primary trade lines, uh, you can find lots of, I mean, many trade lines here uh, that basically these trade lines, uh, the more that you add to your credit profile, uh, the higher your total credit limit will be overall. And uh, what that does is it lowers your credit card utilization, which the credit bureaus, uh, they measure uh, to also as well to calculate your credit score. All right. And I, I will go over that in uh, just a minute here. Uh, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, basically go over what are the first uh, couple of steps that you should take? Um, you know, if you want to get excellent credit or a perfect credit score. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Curtis Davis. Curtis Davis, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning here in the live stream. Uh, Curtis says, good morning. Good morning to you too also, Curtis. And thank you so much for joining us here this morning. It's really a pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you so much for being with us once again. I really appreciate that you have been with us in previous live streams um, also uh, as well, because, you know, it really means a lot uh, to our community, too, also. Um, so, guys, uh, basically, you know, these trade lines, uh, they're very helpful. And some of them, like I we're talking about uh, hard inquiries, some of them do not give any hard inquiries. OK, so there are some that, you know, uh, will not give hard inquiries, uh, but you want to make sure that you uh, open up at least four credit cards that you use 
every month, okay? You want to make sure that you use four credit cards every month. Now, someone had asked me, how many credit cards should I have? Now, that's also a great question. Um, well, basically, I do not know how many you should have, how many someone should have, because I never came across a correct answer for that question uh, through research or by any other means, uh, because people have various credit limits, various amounts of credit. You know, I know people who have 100 credit cards, 50 credit cards, 25, you know, and the numbers vary, you know, from anywhere from, you know, $30,000 in total credit limit to over $250,000 in total credit. Okay. Um, so I don't, do not believe there is a limit uh, to the amount of credit cards that you should have. Okay. But you want to keep in mind, however, uh, that you do not want to have too many hard inquiries because every major bank or lender um, has uh, different requirements for how many hard inquiries is too much um, to the point where they will not um, extend any lines of credit to you. Uh, Curtis Davis says, in beginning, in the beginning, four cards helps build score fast. Yes, absolutely, Curtis. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, four credit cards, it really helps to build your credit scores uh, fast. And uh, there are, you know, several secured uh, credit cards out there uh, that you can apply for that do not well, there are there's one in particular that does not give a hard inquiry that I know of um, is for people who have, uh, you know, a lower credit score, maybe in the low 500s um, that is looking to establish credit. The open sky uh, credit card does not give a hard inquiry and they're very open, open to approving almost just about anyone uh, with any credit score, with any credit profile. Okay. And um, also there are others um, that, you know, they do uh, approve people and work with people with bad credit too. Also, uh, you can check with some of the major banks. Uh, Bank of America has a secured credit card. Um, City uh, Capital One has a secured credit card. I'm not sure if they graduate. Some people are saying that they still graduate to unsecured status. Um, I'm not sure. I've been hearing reports that they no longer graduate anymore. Uh, but you can always check that out. They do have a, a website that you can go to and um, check out with uh, check it out with Capital One too, also as well. Uh, Discover it. They have a great secured credit card. Um, but before you apply, uh, for credit, uh, I would suggest that you go to the pre-approval sites, go to credit card pre-approval sites. And, um, that way you can get a better idea if you, whether or not you have a chance of being approved because discover it, um, ha does tend to deny some people. Uh, credit based on their credit report. Sometimes it can be a matter of uh, how many hard inquiries they, they may have, or it can be a matter of uh, their credit score um, being too low. It could be different factors uh, that they use to, you know, approve people or deny people uh, for the Discover It secured credit card. If you cannot uh, uh, get approved for Discover It or any of uh, secured credit cards from the major banks that I went over, like Bank of America, U.S. Bank, um, City has a secured credit card, a Capital One or Discover, um, there's always Open Sky. Um, there are other alternatives, too, that are not um, so attractive as some of the major banks. Uh, but they do build credit also as well. Um, maybe just as good as the big banks too also. Um, but they do have a little somewhat higher fees. 
um, maybe higher inter APRs, interest rates, um, higher annual fees, possibly. Um, but they, they will work with people with bad credit or people who have been denied from the big banks. Um, everyone, please give a warm welcome to Bodyguard 856. Bodyguard, thank you so much for joining us once again. Uh, we are very happy to see you here with us again in another live chat. Um, Bodyguard 856 says, good morning. Good morning to you also, uh, Bodyguard, and thank you so much for joining us in our live stream chat once again, Bodyguard. Um, so these other credit cards that they do work with people who may have been denied credit from the big banks, um, some of them are uh, First Progress Bank. Um, and also First Premier Bank. Uh, those will pretty much uh, work with just about anyone who applies, okay? But just keep in mind, guys, I mean, they may not be the best credit cards out there, but they do build credit maybe even just as good as secured credit cards from the big bank. Uh, they can build credit maybe just as good as a Capital One or just as good as a Bank of America card or U.S. bank card or even a Discover card because they report to the major credit bureaus monthly, every month, okay? Um, so those are some great alternatives there. Um, there was another alternative <clears throat> that I found out about a few weeks ago uh, coming from Amazon, uh, but uh, I've been checking with Amazon on their website and uh looks like every time i go to their website to get the information to apply for this their secured credit card uh their website keeps saying they're updating the site to check back with the site later so what i did was i messaged uh, amazon and um, hopefully they will get back to me you know in a timely manner and that way i could find out you know what's going on like are they really just updating the website or did they decide to um, maybe uh, alter or change the offers or uh, maybe they I don't know who knows but I will not know anything until they respond back to me until I could get a hold of one of them uh, Curtis Davis says Merrick's banks has a deal called Do double my line they start with 500 and double after seven months paid on time. Wow, uh, that's awesome there, Curtis. I heard about uh, Merrick Banks. Um, they they do have, I believe they do have a pre-approval site too also. Um, so that may be an option. You know, if you don't have like too many hard inquiries, like if you only have maybe uh, a one, two, three, possibly, I don't know what Merrick Banks, um, uh, rules are concerning um, how many hard inquiries can you have or not have, but you can always feel free to go to their approval pre-approval site and um, check to see if you have an offer there uh, with them, if they can offer you a uh, credit card uh, with them too also as well. Uh, there's another card that um, can build credit too also, and it's called the Avant Avant card, that's A-V-A-N-T. And the event card also has a pre-approval site too also. So um, that will not hurt your credit score uh, to just check and see if you're approved for the event card um, also. And all of those cards that I mentioned, they do um, help to build your credit score uh, because they report uh, to all the major credit bureaus uh, to also every month uh, on time. So uh, that's a, a good thing about, you know, um, starting off with four credit cards um, and using these four credit cards every month. Okay. And um, another option uh, to start building credit is to become an authorized user, or that could be another alternative besides having for credit cards, you, you can also become an authorized user, okay? And um, if you choose to become an authorized user, um, there's pros and cons to that too also, okay? Of course, some of the pros are, you know, um, 
It can increase your credit score. Uh, it can establish a credit history. Um, you can uh, definitely get to an excellent credit score a lot faster uh, by using authorized by use be becoming an authorized user. Uh, but when you do become choose to become an authorized user, you want to make sure that it is someone that you can trust. It is someone who uh, you know who maintains good credit or, or excellent credit um, and someone who, uh, you know, pretty much is, is pretty much a res responsible uh, with maintaining their credit. OK, uh, because their whatever is, you know, on their credit is going to reflect on you It's going to affect you and your credit score too, also as well. Um, bodyguard. Oh, okay. Bodyguard start talking to Curtis. Curtis says, not sure. Two friends have been in the program. Okay. You're talking to uh, Curtis. You're talking about, uh, oh, Merrick Banks. Oh, okay. Y yeah. I'm not too sure about that either. What kind of fees they have. Uh, but you got to keep in mind guys, you know, a lot of, uh, credit cards or secured credit cards or, or credit building cards, um, they come with higher interest rates uh, than the prime credit cards. Because you see, the banks, they know that they are pretty much going to be dealing with people, you know, who are either new to credit or they don't know um, how well they are with managing credit yet until they can see, you know, how they use their credit, you know, over time. Uh, so they have higher interest rates uh, to make up for a risk that they may be taking. So uh, a lot of these cards have high uh, interest rates. Some of them have annual fees um, to pay to also, but, you know, you can avoid uh, interest rates of paying interest. If you pay down, pay off your balance in full every month, that's one way to avoid the interest rate. Unless you're using a credit one, uh, credit card where, uh, your interest is, uh, starts calculating, um, from the day you make your purchase. Okay. That's one exception. Uh, Curtis Davis says, yes. Okay. Thanks for that, Curtis. And he, Curtis says, I hold my jewelers and capital one. Awesome. Curtis. Yeah. My jewelers is a great, uh, trade line to have. I talk about the, my jewelers in, um, that bit, the last video I was just referring to, uh, entitled live 90 K and primary trade lines and AUs. That's there on the screen. I believe my mouse is hovering over it right now. Um, so that one, I talk about their terms and conditions and how the program works with My Jewelers Club. And it's not a bad program. I mean, they start you off with a $5,000 credit limit. It does cost money, however, uh, to get signed up with My Jewelers Club and get a membership with them. But they do report to the major credit bureaus, which helps you out because it adds another 5,000 to your overall credit limit and keeps your credit utilization low, which in turn helps to increase your credit score uh, to also as well. So that uh, trade line, My Jewelers Club, can be found inside of this video. The full details and lots of other uh, trade lines is in this video too also uh, that do help um, build on your total credit limit and your credit score uh, too also as well. Okay. So the next thing you want to do <coughs> when you're starting to build credit, since we're talking about building credit is you want to start a credit mix. Okay. Or develop a, a credit mix. Okay. Uh, because a credit mix is also a portion of your FICO score. Okay. And if you have a good credit mix established, you can get a higher score um, in comparison to someone who does not have 
you know, only has credit cards only or revolving credit only. OK, and a good credit mix would involve uh, revolving credit such as credit cards or retail cards, charge cards and also installment loans installment loans, uh, student loans, uh, mortgage, car loan, you know, any, any type of loan that reports to the credit bureau. Um, these all make up part of your credit mix. Okay. Um, and including credit lines too, personal credit lines. Um, so it is a benefit to you to also, besides having four credit cards that you use every month, uh, it is also beneficial to you to uh, open up uh, some type of installment loans. And there are um, lots of installment loans for people who are trying to build credit or someone who's new to credit. They are credit builder loans, actually. Okay. And it would be in your best interest if you're building credit. Uh, to get a credit builder loan. Okay. Um, so I know two of them um, that are credit builder loans. Uh, self lender is a great one. Uh, people who have signed up with self lender uh, have attained, um, an, on average, over 110 points in less than a year um, using a self lender. And uh, self lender is, is pretty much a uh, it's sort of a savings tool also as well as well as a loan um, because they hold the the funds for you in a CD account which is FDIC insured and the funds is released when you complete the full term of the loan and you finish making all of your payments. Um, so you can look that up or do a Google search for uh, self lender and um, Actually There is a, another let's see. I'm gonna take you guys to a playlist here On the home screen of the channel of this channel here uh, that deals with the credit builder loans so as you can see, this is a playlist here. You just go to the tab playlist and you can scroll down a little and here's the playlist here. It's called credit builder loans. And you can click on view playlists. I know there's only two videos in there, but the reason why there's only two videos there is because I pretty much covered a lot of the credit builder loans, you know, this plenty more out there besides the ones that I mentioned in this these two videos however uh, but you know besides a self lender there's also a credit builder loan called credit strong um, so that's yeah that's spelled just like credit C R E D I T uh, strong S T R O N G uh, dot com uh, so this one here also builds credit and does pretty much the same thing that self lender does too. also as well may have a difference in maybe interest rates. Okay. Uh, but they also build credit too. also, and there's several other credit builder loans that I go over in these two videos here. Um, that's on the screen, a new credit builder loan and comparing credit builder loans. Um, the second one, comparing credit builder loans, goes more into detail, um, talking about different credit builder loans. Uh, Curtis Davis says, I have Navy Federal Pledge Loan, Secure Loan, minimum payment $42 a month. Only issue it did not last nine months, paid it off in six months. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Curtis, uh, you want to... You want to kind of not do that. Like if you get another uh, installment loan, uh, you want to um, let it last the full term of the loan. Okay. Uh, reason being is because every month when they report to the credit bureaus, uh, it can possibly increase your credit scores. 
Um, so if you pay it off early, you, you won't get any extra credit for doing so. But you will miss out on any credit score increases that you would have gotten had you kept the loan for the full term. Okay. Uh, so if you're thinking about getting another installment loan, um, I would definitely, uh, you know, keep the loan for the entire term also. So there's several other, you know, credit builder loans that are really awesome out there. Navy Federal has some that, you know, Curtis had brought up. And I go over details in um, this video comparing credit builder loans. Um, and the pledge loan is pretty good. And I believe they have another loan, too. I don't remember the name of it, but I think they have like two of them or three of them, I believe it is. A lot of the credit... Uh, unions have very good uh, credit builder loans. Um, one of them I go over in these two videos is uh, DCU, the Digital Credit Union, uh, which they are kind of, you know, they don't approve everyone who apply. They say they do, but that they say they work with everyone, uh, but they don't. Um, another one is the Penn Fed. Uh, they also have a credit builder loan. And uh, there's so many of them. I mean, almost every um, credit union that you'll find may have a credit build loan uh, that you can utilize, or they may have a secured loan uh, where you can utilize. And, you know, I don't think banks have a problem with you just, <clears throat> you know, putting money down, securing it with some funds and, you know, getting a loan off of that, you know, to build up your credit score uh but different banks have different requirements uh so navy federal is one of the good banks uh to go to however because they have very low interest rates and you know it's, it's a good idea to establish a relationship with navy federal because navy federal is pretty good with offering uh very generous credit limits on credit cards you know, and they have some very good uh, credit cards too, also as well. I think I believe one of the best secured credit cards is offered from Navy Federal, too, also. So that may be an option for you uh, if you're looking for a secured credit card. Uh, Navy Federal is a great place to go uh, for a secured credit card, uh, too, also. So uh, there's. Uh, So there's another step uh, that I wanted to go over with you guys um, besides uh, to starting to build credit um, and doing so, of course, it goes without saying, you know, to pay your bills on time by the, you know, <clears throat> if not by the due date, then, you know, before the statement closing date, uh, because the credit creditor uh, will begin soon to report to the credit bureau so you want to make sure that everything is cleaned up uh, like everything is paid down the balances are paid down below seven percent uh, so that way you can get the highest boost in your credit score as possible okay uh so whatever you use during the month <clears throat> whether you use half of your credit limit or you use a quarter of it or a third of it or a tenth of it. Um, just make sure that you pay it down below 7% <clears throat> before the statement closing date. If you're going to pay it down by the due date, then just remember that to wait a few days until they report to the credit bureau before you use that card again. Uh, so that way you don't end up getting it report, getting, getting, a uh, higher balance reported uh, after you paid, okay? Um, so that's all part of uh, building up credit. And that's uh, some of the techniques that I teach, you know, here on this channel too also as well. Uh, so I do have uh, another video that I made that's... Uh, goes over my story if you pretty much need a guideline uh, to go by 
on exactly, you know, what to do and what trade lines to open up to get you, you know, into the 700s, you know, and on your way up uh, to an excellent credit score. Then I do have a series, actually. Better yet, um, I'll show you guys the playlist because the playlist is, you know, pretty much groups them together. And uh, that playlist is here. It's called from 548 to 720 credit score. And I'm just going to click on that so I can show you guys the full playlist. It's a series of three videos, okay? It's three videos because, uh, you know, there's a part one, uh, which is credit building, credit improvement. Uh, where I pretty much, you know, introduce you guys, you know, to my story and who I am and um, a brief overview of what I've done in part two, um, dealing with more of the uh, credit repair side of it and my experience with Lexington Law. And a part three, uh, this is where I take you on the computer screen and on my screen and I show you, you know, exactly, you know, how I got over a 700 credit score. Okay. Um, so with that being said, okay, Curtis Davis says, do you use FICO 9? <clears throat> yes, I do, Curtis, uh, because... FICO 9 is being used by uh, Wells Fargo, from what I understand, and um, some other banks, too, also. I don't know exactly how many banks, but I could definitely find out, like, how many. Um, again, a rough estimate uh, by doing some research, but I could definitely get back to you on that. Uh, but, yes, I do use FICO 9. Tanya Williams, everyone, please give a warm welcome to Tanya Williams. Tanya Williams, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And uh, she says, good morning, good morning, good morning, Tanya. How are you doing this morning? And uh, so basically, uh, th these three videos is a series right here. And it's a good way to uh, find out exactly. Like if you have a lot of people have questions and they say, well, you know, Lyndon, how did you do all this? How, you know, what did you go through? What uh, trade lines did you apply for? What credit cards did you apply for? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, these three videos go into detail on exactly, you know, how I went about it to get from in the low 500s to over 700 in less than five months. Okay. Um. So I'm going to get into the next uh, section of our topic today. And we're going to talk about a little about the main things that credit bureaus look at. Okay. Uh, Curtis Davis says, great information. Yes, thank you so much, Curtis. I uh, really appreciate that. I try to give the best um, information possible, you know, so that way. You know, today's topic, guys, you know, it's kind of like for, you know, for a little for everyone here, you know, uh, but mainly for our credit building community, you know, so that way we can definitely improve, you know, our credit lives. So this is a um, image on the screen. If you could see the image clearly, um, please type a one in the comments. Just to let me know that the screen is coming up clear. Um, so here on the screen here, uh, we can see this is a uh, image coming from myfico.com. And it is an article talking about credit education and what's uh, included in your credit score. Yeah, Curtis Davis says, number one, thank you so much, Curtis, for that. Tanya Williams uh says number one thank you so much for that tanya uh so this is an image uh from from that article here and uh what myfico.com is trying to uh show us here is how the fico score basically how uh, 
are my FICO scores calculated? Okay. Uh, so if you're wondering, like, how are my FICO scores calculated, they get into it here um, in this article on myfico.com. So uh, basically, it's five portions uh, to a FICO score here. And you have 30%, uh, 30, well, we'll start with the highest one here. We have a, a 35%. Let me get back the screen over here. Okay. You have a 35%, which is payment history, which is the highest, okay? Um, that's going to be the highest amount of points uh, that you can, the most amount of points that you can possibly get uh, from one of these five categories, okay? But this, um, this particular section here, payment history, there's two ways. Uh, to get the most, to get more points out of it, or to get the most points out of it. The one way is with time and just patience, you know. And as you start to build credit, you know, the months go by, and every month, your credit cards, your trade lines, your installment loans, your student loans, your personal loans, your retail cards, your charge cards, all of these different credit lines of that you have, they were as they report to the credit bureau, you're developing an uh, age of credit, an average age of credit. And that's what the credit bureaus uh, calculate. And and basically, it's just, it's, it's just an average is what it is. So for someone, you know, like me, like I have uh, over 17 accounts reporting to my credit bureau every month. They take an average of all of them. So all they do is they total them all up. Okay. They they figure out each one's age by the date they were open. They add up all of the ages. They get a total age of all of my credit lines. And then they divide that by how many credit lines I have. Since I have over 17, we'll just say 17. So they divide my total age of all of my accounts by 17, and that number is my average age of credit. Okay. So as you can see, average age of credit goes up, you know, month to month as time goes by. So basically, that's why I said this first option uh, requires, you know, patience. You know, it's, just, it's a waiting game pretty much. So there is another option. The second option is um, if you have a family member or a friend or someone that you know and you trust who has a good credit or excellent credit, um, but also has a good payment history, a longer payment history, maybe um, almost a year or more, and you're new to building credit and you, you feel that this can increase your credit score it can add on to your age of credit or your payment history um then you know by all means i would go ahead and do the authorized user if you know you feel that's something that you know would be would benefit you uh, however payment history their payment history would uh definitely reflect on your credit score. Matter of fact, a lot of the things that they do with their credit profile will affect your credit score, okay? Including uh, whether or not their credit score goes up or down, um, especially the account that you're added onto, the credit card that you're added onto, okay? If their utilization goes up, it, it affects your uh, utilization. OK, um, so it, it, whatever they do is going to affect your credit score uh, pretty much. OK, so um, it's always beneficial to have, you know, if you're going to uh, have someone add you on to their credit card as an authorized user, uh, it's very beneficial uh, to make sure that they have a good and strong payment history, that they always pay their bills on time. 
Um, they don't have anything on their credit reports that say like 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days late or anything like that. Um, because if they do, it is you know, it's going to reflect on your credit also, too. Okay, now how long they've had their credit card that um, they add you on as an authorized user, it reflects over here. And that 15%, the length of credit history. Okay, so if their credit card is say uh, eight months old, then and your uh, total age of credit or your average age of credit is say you know three months or four months, yeah, yeah I can um, bump your credit score up. Okay. But if they're adding you on to a, a brand new credit card that's just been opened, say this month or last month, and it doesn't have a high credit limit, then it may not, it may or may not affect your credit score. I mean, some people, authorized users' uh, accounts affects their credit scores different than others. You know, uh, my fiance Janelle, uh, it definitely affected her credit score. Uh, when she got on a authorized user with Dwayne, her credit score went up 143 points. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click over here. So that way I can uh, show you guys where to find that video. Okay, that video is under playlists. Okay, in the playlist tab, you scroll down and it's right here. Name of the playlist is called Janelle's Credit Score Boost. Okay. And you just click on View Full Playlist to view that. Okay. So inside of this uh, playlist, uh, there are three videos here uh, that go over, talk about Janelle's, um, how she got her credit score increased. Um, so there's three of them and because uh, in the first one it kind of like showed you the beginning of it and the second one kind of shows you an update to it you know and so on uh, so there's three videos there in that series uh, everyone please give a warm welcome to Jimmy Cave Jimmy thank you so much for joining us once again in the live stream Jimmy says you need at least five trade lines to build credit because lenders will view your credit profile as a thin profile. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you for sharing that there, Jimmy. And also, guys, uh, keep in mind, uh, besides having a thin profile, um, you cannot get a, well, you can, but it'll be hard to get a, FICO score unless you have six months, <clears throat> six months of a credit history. <clears throat> okay. I believe you can get around that by, if you add an AU authorized user to that, that, you know, and the, where that authorized user credit card has, you know, enough credit history to bump up your average age of credit two, six months, and then they can give you a FICO score, okay? Um, so having a thin profile is one way, um, you know, you will have to wait to get a FICO score. And uh, another way you would have to wait is if you have less than mo six months, less than six months of uh, credit that's established, right? So thank you so much for sharing that, Jimmy. Uh, Curtis Davis says, okay, good morning to Jimmy. Yes, good morning, Jimmy. Good morning. Okay, so, so again, if, you know, you guys have came in late or anything, um, <clears throat> basically all I went over here is, you know, building credit was the first thing to do when you're thinking about improving, when you want to get excellent credit to improve your credit score, um, you know, get a free copy of your credit report, other alternatives to get a credit report, how to monitor your credit 
on a regular basis, you know, and, you know, when you're building credit, you should be monitoring your credit. You should be looking at it on a regular basis too also as well, because you want to know uh, what's going on with your credit. And um, so there are several different um, credit monitoring services out there. There's Credit Karma. There's Credit Sesame, Identity IQ, and there's Wallet Hub, <clears throat> and there's others too also. I like Wallet Hub because it updates every day. Well, they say every 24 hours. Um, and if there are any changes uh, to my credit report, they also uh, send me alerts, you know, email alerts too also. Curtis Davis says, should people get a credit card before a student loan? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, Curtis, um, I know that student loan, a student loan will help you, will help someone uh, to establish credit because a student loan is just goes into a different type of credit uh, that you will need to have a healthy credit mix um, to get a higher credit score also. Um, so student loans pretty much are close to installment loans, okay? Uh, to where they do build credit too. Also, I mean, if you pay, you have to pay them on time, of course, just like any other loan. You pay your, your loans on time, and uh, you know you, you treat it just like pretty much a, a, lo a regular loan. You uh, fulfill your term and agreements, you know, and um, you know you you keep up to that every month, and that way you can uh, develop. Uh, strong good on-time payments with that okay um so this credit mix right here uh, being a, i just mentioned that there uh, accounts for 10 percent that accounts for 10 percent of your credit score okay i know i know 10 percent is one of the lowest numbers here um but it's still it still can be a lot i mean if you um, try to figure in what is 10% of a total a highest credit score that's possible So that's a lot of points. Okay So that's why when I first uh, before I got my installment loan established I Started with some secured credit cards That's how I started building up my credit Okay, now I got up to a credit score over 700 in less than five months okay but um first i didn't have an installment loan i had my secured loans first and i had well secured credit cards i should say first i had uh, three secured credit cards okay and then i had the installment loan but i also had you know some other trade lines down the line too um so i mean some people say you should start with three uh, some people say you should start with four. Some people say you should start with five. But the main important thing, guys, is that you start, okay? You can start with three credit cards like I did and get over a 700 score in less than five months, okay? You can start with two credit cards or you can start with five. I know people who have started with different amounts and still achieved the same results, okay? Uh, but the option is... Totally up to you. Uh, Julian Robinson says, good morning, y'all. What's up with the Navy Federal Credit Union secured loan? Yes, good morning, Julian. Um, how you doing, buddy? I'm glad to see you back. Welcome back uh, to a live stream once again. Thank you so much for joining us, Julian. Um, yes, what's up with the Navy Federal Credit Union secured loan? We pretty much, um, someone brought that up. Who was it that brought up the Navy? Oh, Curtis. Yeah, Curtis. Um, I believe Curtis had brought up the Navy Federal Secured Loan. Okay. And um, there's so many other people that I know that have uh, tried out the Navy Federal Secured Loan. And I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Um, we kind of uh, went over that in the uh, credit builder loans. <coughs> so there is a playlist under the playlist tab here on the channel. And uh, if you look on the credit builder loans, um, 
it's like two videos and um one of them has navy federal in the title so that one talks about the navy federal secured loan the pledge loan i think it's called and um the other loan too also all right and they're one of the best you know from what i've been hearing one of the best uh secured credit cards to get also you know and uh I, they have a really good uh secured uh loan or credit builder loan program too because uh, they offer some really great interest rates too also so basically all these credit builder loans the installment loans the student loans the mortgage if you have a mortgage loan if you have a car loan you know anything that has the name loan at the end of it um can go right here under the credit mix okay and you do need some type of a loan uh whether that be a, a, a installment loan, a student loan, a, a personal loan, or, you know, credit builder loan, uh, any type of uh, installment agreement, you know, you definitely will need um, besides your revolving credit. Okay. Um, so that way the credit bureaus can see that, you know, well, you know, he's responsible with different types of credit. OK, um, he's good at managing not only revolving credit, but he's also good at managing inst installment credit <clears throat> and he can handle a loan and make payments on time for six months to a year or what have you. Um, so credit mix is definitely going to help you out. It's 10% of your score. OK, so you should have, you know, something in each category, basically. OK, if you have a, a self lender loan, then that's 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 fine. You know, if you have two installment loans, that's fine. OK, it doesn't take a whole lot to do well in this category of credit mix. Um, but you do need um, revolving credit cards. You do need a, an installment loan or, you know, if you if you have to have more than one loan, that's fine. Um, retail cards also count from like store cards. Uh, they count as well. Uh, so all of that goes into your credit mix here. Uh, Curtis Davis says, I use credit.com and Credit Karma to monitor my credit. Yes, absolutely. I like uh, Credit Karma too. Also, Curtis, I, I don't listen. I don't listen to uh, all of the uh, recommendations and like when they try to recommend me credit cards and things like that because they don't. For one, um, Credit Karma does not. I don't believe that they take into consideration how many. Uh, you know, other parts of a person's uh, credit profile, uh, not just only their score. You know, I, I think Credit Karma just looks at the score. That's that's my opinion anyway. I, I don't think they look at other things. I think they just look at your credit score and they assume that you qualify for this particular credit card or that particular credit card or that particular credit card. OK, but they don't go and look into the details of your credit report as far as they don't look at how many hard inquiries you, a person may have you know um so um that's why i don't um believe in uh credit karma's recommendations but i believe that credit karma is a great way to monitor uh my credit score and so that way i can see how well i am doing and uh for instance, when uh, a credit card, you know, reports uh, to the credit bureaus, you know, Credit Karma lets me know uh, if my credit utilization goes down or up. They let me know. They alert me. Uh, so they're pretty much good for that. Um, I mean, I, what I don't like is that I have to wait an entire week to get an update, you know, Um but that's why I also use a wallet hub because they update my scores 
every 24 hours. So I don't remember if I have used credit.com or not because I have used so many of them because I like to keep up to date with my credit on a regular basis. Um, but credit.com I hear is not too bad also. So uh, let's see what else do we have. New credit. Okay. Uh, we pretty much talked a little bit about, you know, hard inquiries and how some of the banks, they will deny you if you have too many hard inquiries. They each have their own requirements. Okay. What that is for each bank, I, I, I can tell you that right now, <laughs> that without some deep research into that, you know, um, and pretty much I, I learned a lot, too, from um, other people's experiences also, you know, like uh, I know of people who have gotten approved for like Discover It um, credit card and had three hard inquiries in a 670 credit score, I believe it was 670. Um, so and others had, you know, different situations, different amounts of hard inquiries. But I can tell you that Discover does take into account how many hard inquiries you have. OK, uh, um, the last time I spoke to them, um, they did not give me a specific number of how many hard inquiries is too much for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, when I did apply uh, to them, I did have quite a few. Our hard inquiries, so um, that's why I was denied. But that all also came from Credit Karma, you know, and their recommendations when they told me, "Oh yeah, uh, you, you're you have a good approval odds for Discover It card," you know. Um, and I went ahead and uh, didn't know uh, about the uh, pre-approval sites. And that's another thing, guys. Uh, Discover It, they do have a pre-approval site. Uh, where you can go on and check to see whether or not you will be approved uh, for a Discover It card. Well, also keep in mind that um, you can also be denied after pre-approval. That is possible. Okay. Uh, but pre-approval, I believe, makes the chances, you know, better of being approved. And it gives you more information, you know, that way you're not totally in the dark on whether or not, you know, you're going to get approved or not. You know, it, it's kind of almost like almost I say almost almost like studying for an exam. OK. But not quite not quite that, uh, you know, guaranteed. Uh, but uh, new credit is pretty much involves hard inquiries and a hard inquiry uh, is when you apply for credit or, or a company checks your credit score, okay? Like a car dealership, uh, when they check your credit score to try to get you approved for a vehicle. Uh, any type of credit application, uh, some apartments uh, will, apartment complexes will check your credit score too also. If you apply for a mortgage, you know, if you apply for, for so many different things, you know, they, you can get a hard inquiry, okay? Unless they specifically say no hard inquiry, um, then, you know, but they do let you know um, before you apply or in the application somewhere, they do let you know that um, they will be checking your credit. So you kind of want to manage uh, your hard inquiries here in this category, okay, to the best of your ability, uh, depending on what you intend on doing, uh, what what your goals are. <clears throat> you know, if you're uh, if you're uh, looking to go after, like, say, some of the the Chase credit cards, for example, if you're looking at to go after some of the uh, Prime Chase credit cards some point down the line then you know you might want to uh start your credit building with chase you know, try to open up a chase secured credit card if they have one available um and then work work with that and build up your 
credit score to the best of your ability with that and then you know go from there because chase has that 524 rule you know um where you can only have five accounts open in the past 24 months so um if that's your goal then you know that's how you would go about it if that's not your goal then you don't have to worry about chase 524 rule you know because there are other banks that have very good uh, prime credit cards too also as well uh, Julian oh, okay Curtis no oh, I went over that one Curtis Davis says credit score can be like a good GPA in college it's easier to maintain 700 once you reach the level um, yes it can be uh, Curtis uh, but just keep in mind though you, you can also lose points on your credit score too. Also, um, you know, for things like hard inquiries, you know, because once you do get up to a 700 credit score, you may, you may uh, look at offers, other uh, credit card offers and say, oh, wow, you know, I want to apply for, for the pedal card. I want to apply for this. I, I want to get that credit card. I want to get that credit card. You know, and before you know it, you got like, uh, you know, four or five hard inquiries and, just in uh, less than a three month period. So you definitely uh, wanna manage uh, your credit applications as much as possible. I mean, if there are uh, trade lines that offer no hard inquiry, it would definitely take advantage of that. And uh, I do mention some of those too also um, here on the channel in, the, in that video. Um, 90k in primary trade lines and AUs uh, that I pretty much uh, showed you guys that on the screen and the beginning of the video um, that one does not offer does not give you a hard any hard inquiry and it also offers a high credit limit I believe the credit limit is 7,300 or 7,500 or so keep in mind though that trade line is it is expensive to maintain um, to also but you know the benefit of that is there's no hard inquiry but also keep in mind that when they do report that trade line to your credit report it will still count as a new account it'll be added on as a new account so it can possibly drop your credit score because you will lose um um uh, you may lose a few months in uh, your average age of credit, which will bring down your length of credit history. Um, your average age of credit, that is. It will bring down your average age of credit. Uh, so it is tempting, you know, to just apply for different things when you get into the 700, into the 700s. Um, but it is good to just kind of, you know, not. You know for a while you know especially if you have you know a lot of hard inquiries um, that maybe you acquired from building up your score you know raising up your credit score from below 600 or from the low 500s through up to over 700 you know and when you're at that point in the 700s then you want to say to yourself hey you know I think it's time I take maybe six months off from applying for credit you know and uh, it, that is a good idea you know because then you kind of prepare yourself uh, for the next um, the next tier of credit which would be uh, what they call a tier two credit uh, this is where you're getting into credit cards that can offer like Beside, you know, good cash back, uh, like 5% cash back, or anywhere from 2 to 5% cash back, and also um, travel miles and, you know, all, all of these things there, you know, to where you're still building credit, but on a, you know, from through a different tier of credit, okay, and which those credit cards require a different uh, level of credit. Okay, but definitely, guys, hard inquiries they do affect your credit score. I know they're only 10 percent, 
of your credit score, but they do um, carry some weight there. And, and you can definitely feel the effects of hard inquiries, you know, as they add up, as you get more of them. Okay. Uh, so this category here, as you can see, it also has a long uh, line to it here. You know, the second largest after this one here, after the payment history, second largest is the amounts owed. Okay. And um, that's why um, so many people talk about how you can increase your credit score like within 30 days or within 45 days um, just by simply lowering um, the amounts you owe on your credit cards. So keeping your credit card utilization uh, below 7% will definitely give you the highest boost in your credit score because this total out here it totals out to 30% of your credit score. Okay. Uh, so the lower your balances are, the higher uh, the amount of points, the higher you can get um, the most out of that, that 30%. That's what you want, okay? And the best way to do that is keep your balances as low as possible. I recommend below 7%, okay? And um, there's been difference uh, where people have said... Uh, I wondered if you know the zero keeping a zero balance is good or bad well it can be it can be bad if you do not use your credit cards okay if you do not use your credit cards for month to, you know from month to month or you know it can be bad because uh, your banks that you, your credit card issuers can be saying well you know this guy he's not you know, this person, they're not using their the credit. So why do we still have the account open? You know, <clears throat> so they could be on the verge of just closing your account because of inactivity. And that if that is uh, one of your oldest accounts, uh, you don't want them closing that account because then you will lose any of the credit limit um, that came with that account. And when you lose uh, some of your credit, your total credit limit, then there's a possibility your credit score can go down because your credit utilization can go up, okay? Uh, if you do not adjust your spending for that, okay? So that you definitely want to keep in mind um, that um that that can be a, a a bad thing you know but uh closed accounts however they do stay on your credit report uh from i i've did a little research into that and bad um not bad uh, closed accounts they do stay on your credit report longer longer especially if they are uh in good standing and um, they stay they stay on your credit report longer than collections do, okay? Or negative uh, delinquent accounts, uh, which stay on there for seven years or so. But um, good payment history, and uh, you know if they close your account and you had a zero balance, but good payment history, um, that's that can stay on your account for ten years. And um, so that that kind of had an ex I had kind of had an experience with that which I kind of wonder about because I had what it was is I had I was added as an authorized user I had an authorized user account with someone on their credit card and when their account closed um, it still I still ended up with two years of their credit history on my credit report so <laughs> I kind of benefited from that. You know, because it helped my score just inch up just a little. But but here's the difference, um, though. However, of having a credit score in the 700s to when I had a credit score in the 500s. In the 500s, anything like one of those authorized user accounts uh, that I have, 
uh, would have boosted my credit score, possibly could have possibly boosted my credit score over 100 points. From the low 500s up, okay, could have, okay. But now that I'm in the 700s, it does not have that same effect on my credit score now as it would have back when I was in the low 500s, if that makes any sense. Um, so, you know, when you get in the 700s, like uh, Curtis had brought up, is it easier to maintain 700? Uh, it, it, it I, I guess it, um, it becomes easier with time, I believe, because you, um, you know, this is like all of these uh, things you're, you're learning, that you've learned and you practice, you put into practice uh, as far as building up your credit score. Uh, they become easier because it, it becomes ha a habit. It, it becomes a learned behavior. Um, and it's something that, um, yeah, I would say it becomes easier with time. Yes, for sure. Um, so basically, all of these five categories um, that we went over here uh, make up um, how the credit scores are calculated, okay? They go by these five um, categories for determining what your FICO score, what your FICO score is going to be, uh, basically, all right? Um, so these are the main things that the credit bureaus look at, okay? And... Um, I'm just going to click over here and go back just a little. One screen. And uh, I can pretty much show you guys. Um, you know, if you've been with this channel for a, a while, then um, it's a, one of the first few videos uh, that I made. And this one here can be found in the videos tab. All the way down to the bottom towards the middle here. And this is the video is called Main Things That Credit Bureaus Look At to Give You a Credit Score or uh, Credit Rating. Yeah, to give you a credit score. Okay. And this video here, it, you know, it talks about uh, uh, these five categories and, you know, what the credit bureaus look at, you know, pretty much. And, you know, a few other things. Uh, but these are the main things. Uh, so if you can master these main things uh, that the credit bureaus uh, look at when they're giving you a credit score, then, you know, you can definitely build your credit score very quickly. Okay. And it is possible to get, I've heard um, people, well, I've heard of one person um, so far that I know. Uh, I'm sure there are other people that have gotten a 700 credit score in 90 days. So, you know, it is possible. Uh, one uh, individual I talked to on Facebook it told me that, you know, she got an uh, 800 credit score in less than a year. So, you know, it's like, guys, you know, a lot of these things are possible. So, you know, just if, if you're doing the right thing, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, you'll start to see results. Okay. And the last thing I want to go over here is things you don't want to do. Okay. Or excellent, I should say excellent credit don'ts. All right. These are things, things that you do not want to do. And, you know, there, there are quite a few of them, but I have gone over, um, you know, the ones that I've came up with here in this video is called excellent credit no-nos okay and again that's in the videos tab here yeah it's quite a ways down because that video i made about a month ago so it's called excellent credit no-nos and um those are the things that you do not want to do okay when you're uh building credit so that so those videos and all those other videos that I refer to here in this live stream, guys, uh, you definitely want to, 
you know, when you get the time, go through them, look them over, you know, um, and you will see there's a lot of valuable information there that can definitely benefit you in as far as in building your credit score. Okay, guys. Uh, so I want to thank you guys so much uh, for coming today and participating here in our live stream chat today uh, once again. And uh, as a tradition, as we always do here on this uh, live stream on our channel, we like to recognize uh, those of you who have participated today in the live streams and contributed either by, you know, making a comment or, you know, if having a question. Um, so we definitely want to recognize you, okay? Just to let you know that we really appreciate you. So first and foremost, I want to say a special thank you to Curtis Davis. And Curtis Davis, thank you so much, uh, Curtis, for joining us today in the live stream. We really appreciate you and uh, commenting and contributing today. Uh, we also want to say special thank you to Bodyguard856. Uh, Bodyguard, thank you so much for joining us here in the live stream today. Really appreciate you. I hope to see you come back for many more uh, live streams again in the future. Uh, we also want to say a special thank you to Tanya Williams. And Tanya Williams, thank you so much for joining us once again in the live stream. Really appreciate all that you uh, contribute uh, to our discussions and our live streams here. Um, also, we want to say a special thank you to Jimmy Cave. And Jimmy Cave, really appreciate, um, you know, you joining us here in the live stream today. And uh, welcome back again. And I hope to see you back again with us, you know, for many more live streams also. So thank you very much. I uh, also want to say a special thank you to Julian Robinson. And Julian, we want to thank you so much for joining us here today on this wonderful Sunday. I uh, appreciate you and all you've contributed. Uh, you really brought up some really awesome, you know, discussions uh, that we've had. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us uh, once again, Julian. Really appreciate you. Uh, so, guys, um, thank you all for joining today in the live chat. And if you haven't already, please give this uh, live chat a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel a lot and, you know, helps us to spread the message. And um, if you haven't yet, uh, you've been watching this uh, channel for a while and you've been watching our videos, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button um, and hit the bell for notifications. That way you will always know when I make videos or when we make videos here on this channel too also as well. And uh, please go ahead and share this video with all of your friends on Facebook and all your social media networks too also as well because it really helps us uh, in our efforts to help as many people as possible in our journey to excellent credit uh, with us too also as well. And also, uh, we I ask that, you know, you guys, please, as many people as possible, please join our Facebook credit group. It's called How to Get Excellent Credit. Uh, the link to that can be found in the bottom of the About section of this channel. So this is the About section here. On the bottom, there's links here to join the Facebook group. Another link here, a link to donate if you choose to donate, or you can uh, send a super chat if you uh, choose to do so. Uh, it really helps out the channel too also. You can follow me on Pinterest here. Uh, here's my nurse company site. There's a link to that. You can follow me on Instagram here, like our Facebook page here. You can follow me on Facebook here. It is a link to email me in case you need um, help with free uh, credit repair help or you need credit, free uh, credit coaching. Uh, you can definitely email me there or you can call me on my business line as 800-605-9053. Or you can follow me on Reddit here or follow me on Twitter here uh, too also as well. 
Um, so there's all those ways uh, where you can uh, contact us in case you need, um, you know, help with credit or anything. Uh, so I want to thank you guys uh, so much uh, once again uh, for joining us today uh, on this live stream. And I um, hope to see you guys uh, once again. Our regular live stream is going to be every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Again, uh, next live, well, our regular live stream is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. I hope you guys will all join us. And um, thank you so much uh, for participating. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a wonderful Sunday. And I'll see you guys again in the next video. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the screen share and jump on the camera with you guys. <clears throat> so that way I can say goodbye in person. <laughs> as a a tradition here um so guys uh thank you once again don't forget to hit the thumbs up smash that share button hit that subscribe button i'll see you again in the next live stream until then stay safe and stay blessed bye now